So today we're in the Fitz Family Kitchen and I'm gonna make my signature Cajun pasta. And instead of using sausage or something like that, we're gonna hit it with some chicken breasts. You know what I mean? So we're gonna brown the chicken breasts right now. We're boiling the water for the noodles and I'll tap back in. So as I'm browning the chicken, I hit it with a little Cajun season and some minced garlic. You know what I mean? Give it a little flavor to add to that pasta. You know what I mean? Look at that. It's getting there. It's getting close. Let's throw the lid on there. Get it closer. And I'll be right back with the veggies, guys. So our chicken is done. Let's move over here. We got our tomatoes prepped. And we got our veggies prepped. We're literally just waiting on the noodles. And we'll be right there. Next, we drop the noodles in. Noodles are just going al dente, guys. Real quick, real simple, you know what I mean? Al dente, then we're gonna take them out, strain them, and I usually shock them by hitting them with cold water just to stop them from cooking. You know what I mean? A little tip. There. So our pasta's done. We're gonna run some cold water over it. Just to shock it, stop the noodles from cooking. You don't want them to get too soft. We're gonna throw them in the sauce. So now that our noodles are done, we're gonna grab our vegetables, which we got some diced bell peppers, and a nice red onion. It's going in there with a little olive oil. A little more olive oil in there. I use olive oil for vegetable, even though vegetable will work. But we'll add olive in there, a little Cajun seasoning on there. All we're trying to do is soften the vegetables, we're not cooking them all the way through. Let those soften up, and then we'll be back to drop the chicken, and we'll marry everything together. You know what I mean? This thing's like a good marriage. Not one of those divorce joint skis, but the marriage that stays together. You know what I mean? Shout out to my uh, all my people out there that are married. I think I got one, one of my friends is married. We need to step our games up, you know what I mean? Start tying that knot. Okay, so our vegetables are soft. We're gonna marry this thing together. So we drop our chicken in. We marry that in. All we're doing really right now is just heating that chicken up a little bit. It's already done. And then we're gonna come right in with the pasta. You see it just fit. We did a little more than a box. Did a little more than a box. This is gonna feed like five or six people, guys. Pot's a little small, but it will work. So we're gonna add our whipping cream. I usually do about half of this. works for me. Our whipping cream is going to be the base of our sauce, guys. It's the base of our sauce. Now that's going to bring the temperature down a little bit. So we're going to have to heat it up. And if your noodles aren't all the way cooked, if you feel like they're not getting cooked, we'll add a little Larry's to this. Season it up. I'm going to drop our cheddar cheese. Juice. We're looking for literally, that's enough. A little blackened seasoning. You're going to season it to your liking. I don't measure. I just go hard in the paint. A little parsley. This is our Cajun. I got two different kinds of Cajun seasonings. You can find your own style for this. And now we're gonna add the lid. We're just gonna cap that and let it cook. You'll see it start rumbling. We'll check back in about five minutes. So I'm gonna add a little minced garlic. You know what I mean? I don't put it in while I'm some, you know, you might ask like, why didn't he put it in when he was doing the vegetables? Cause you don't want the garlic to burn. Garlic burns very fast. So you never really wanna put it on direct heat. 
unless you're going to combine it and marry it with something else very soon because it burns like in the bottom of the pan it's going to burn up so we add a little now and again we're just waiting for it to cook those noodles are going to suck up that sauce a little more blackening can't go wrong with the black gives that good cajun flavor This is about to get interesting. All right, so, I'm gonna take the lid off. As you see your sauce thickening, because we added that cheese in there, plus heavy cream when it gets hot. Thicken for you. So we're gonna add these cherry tomatoes in there. Mix them in real good, along with some farm and that's going to thicken your sauce all the way to where you want as you can see this thing is almost there say cap it for another two three minutes and we're ready to serve booyah fitz family kitchen ricky's raw reviews ricky fitz music i do it all i rap i cook I do a few other things too, but I can't think of them right now. You know what I mean? I tell jokes. You know what I mean? Stand up coming soon. I drink beer. You know what I mean? I'm a beer connoisseur. Cheap beer connoisseur. You know what I mean? But that thing is pretty much done. I'm gonna turn the heat off. Let it sit for about two, three minutes. And we're serving y'all. I'll be back. That right there, that just looks like heaven. Make sure your plate skills is nice, you know. Little Mo Fitz is ready to eat. Broccoli in there with it. This will literally knock your socks off, y'all. Great meal. Very easy to make. Do it yourself thing. What's it called? Do it yourself. D Y D I Y. D I Y. You know, I'm dyslexic. I don't know about me. It's creamy. You get the salary flavors of the season. The nice seasoned uh meat as well. Did add a little occasion to the meat. When you bring this together, this is something straight out of like an Italian restaurant. Maybe like a Southern Italian restaurant. Something you might see on Bourbon Street right here. And of course, nice little screwdriver. We'll put a little orange and some grapefruit juice in there. A little vodka. You know what I mean? Compliment the palate. Wifey's here. Wifey, what do you think? Scale of five forks. You can do half forks. Where do you rate it? She doesn't have her hair done, so she's like, I don't want to be on camera. So we'll let her slide. One of five forks, be honest. make it fun because I didn't add a little spice. The secret ingredient I do for the spice, I didn't have. It's like this chili paste stuff that's real hot that we usually have in the fridge. We just didn't have it. And I didn't think of it. So it wasn't as spicy. You can go real spicy with this. I think the last time I made it, it was too spicy. I didn't really care for it. It's a little more milder. I like this a little more. So go ahead and check it out. I'm gonna leave the recipe in the description so you can check it out. I season it to my own 
flavor, but all I really use is a little blackening season and some Cajun spice. I throw a little Larry's in there. The cheeses, I put some cheddar in this one. Always use the Parmesan. Anytime you're doing a white sauce, like a heavy cream sauce, Parmesan. You know what I mean? Give it that Alfredo kind of taste. It's kind of Alfredo-y. It's my version of like a Cajun Alfredo sauce, basically. You know what I mean? So, cooking with Fitz, man. Thanks for having us. And stay tuned. I'm not done yet. We have the reveal of the Reese's Cupcake. It looks like a tasty cake from Philly, but it's Reese's. Looks like some commissary stuff. Shout out to Dickie Starks. He talked about them zoom zooms and wham whams. That's what we on tonight. A little aperitif, you know what I mean? Offset the taste. Something to set us down and take us home, you know what I mean? So, as promised, we got these Reese's Cupcakes. Reese's Peanut Butter Flavor Cupcakes. You know what I mean? Box one of these bad boys open. Use the box as a plate so I don't get this dinner mat all messed up and get in trouble by the missus. <laughs> in the words of Dickie Starks, shout out to Dickie Starks. He was a mentor of mine, somebody I looked up to, somebody we lost, he passed away. Um, very good guy, taught me a lot about life, but he used to always say, he said, y'all y'all go to jail and <laughs> be eating them zoom zooms and wham whams. Good old commissary, you know what I mean? This kind of reminds me of commissary. Reminds me of uh, the inside of a prison cell, honestly. So I don't eat a lot of sweets nowadays. I don't tell a lot of people that, but that's pretty much one of the reasons. Just reminds me of jail. I used to be a, uh, what's it called, a dessert chef? <laughs> I used to make desserts on the block. Shit was crazy. But uh, let's try it out. I love peanut butter, so I think this is going to hit the spot. Five fork scoring scale. I'll give it a four. It's not great. It's not too sweet. It's very sweet, but it's not like super sweet. Maybe four and a half. I'm going to bump it up. I'll give him four and a half. It's pretty good. I like it, it's moist. The icing's good. Not over peanut buttery, because sometimes they can do it a little too much. Have it just taste kind of nasty. But these are good. Doesn't really taste like Reese's though. It tastes more like a cupcake or a tasty cake from Philly. Shout out to Philly. You know what I mean? Born and raised in the suburbs of Philadelphia. I love Philadelphia culture. Tasty cakes are really good. Tasty cakes are so good. My aunt used to have my mom send them out to her like once or twice a year and she would freeze them. Shout out to Aunt Lori. But yeah, these taste like tasty cakes, man. You know what I mean? Don't eat too much of this though. This isn't really that good for you. Cajun pasta, Reese's peanut butter cupcakes. What more do you want, man? Thanks for watching. Fitz Family Kitchen, Ricky's Raw Reviews. Peace, y'all. Smashing pumpkins. Yeah, I mean, who is she now? Yeah.